God never created a woman. He only created a man. That's all. But the interesting thing is that in the old English language, the woman was called the womb man. The man with the womb. You see? The man with the womb. And just while I'm saying this, let me add this little bit. See, you men here today, when God looks at you, what does he see? He sees that you are Christ. He sees you are spirit, and that spirit is Christ. And that spirit in you is male and female. Right? That's every one of you men here. Now what about you women? Because this is important for you to understand. The man is Christ which is spirit, male, and female. Well, what are you women? When God looks at you, he also sees Christ. Amen. That's who you are. You are spirit, and you are male and female. In the spirit. Amen. Remember, we are not talking physically about your body. Amen. We're talking about the spirit. There's nothing in the Bible about being male and female in your body. Physically. I know there's people today, you know, that are all messed up in that thing too. But we're talking about spiritual reproduction. The spirit can reproduce out of itself because it is male and female functioning as one. So now God says in verse 28, God bless them. What did God bless? Did he bless Adam and Eve? No, sir. God never blessed Adam and Eve. In fact, God never even recognized the woman. In chapter 5, verse 2, it says, And God called their name Adam, not Adam and Eve. As far as God is concerned, the woman does not exist. Now I want to tell you this is so very, very important for us because the women of this world have suffered because of the ignorance of mankind. Mm -hmm. And this church has to bear much of the responsibility for the way in which women have been treated. They are second class citizens in many countries not necessarily in the United States because I seem to be almost winning the battle here of equality. But I want to tell you, that's got nothing to do with it. We are interested only in what God is saying about this situation. And you see, the church has taught very clearly and plainly and loudly that the woman is the inferior part of the partnership, if you like in terms of marriage. And the women are to bow to their husbands. And the women are to keep silence in the church. And a whole lot of other things. So, this is the church has done that. Well then when you go to Africa, of course, you'll see the man walking along like this, and you'll see the woman back here, and she's got about half a ton of bricks on her head or something. You know. Now, where did that come from? That basically has come from the Christian church. Because they were convinced that the woman is the... Well, because she was the one that was deceived in the garden. So you've got to be careful. Watch her. Because snakes love the women. <laughs> well, I want to tell you. I'm saying they're not behind in the snake business either. <laughs> So this is important for us to know these things. That God looks today at you. If you're a man, he sees Christ. If you're a woman, he sees Christ. No different whatsoever. So God never recognized the woman as a separate entity. So he says here then in verse 28, God blessed them, not Adam and Eve, God blessed them, that's 
the male and the female that are part of your being, which is spirit. That's what he blessed. And it says here then, uh, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth with the God kind of people. Now, if you think that that's, you know, we're going to birth these children, you know, like fill the earth, we're going to birth all of these children to fill the earth, you're, you're, you're miles off. It's got nothing to do with natural birthing. Why not? Because we've had 2,000 years to prove that we could do it. Why? Because there's no Christians on this earth, no Christian parents on this earth, that can guarantee you that their children are going to grow up to love the Lord. Amen. In Amen. fact, the opposite is becoming more yeah, right. than the, the norm than anything. In fact, I know pastors who kids are, has got kids that are on, on drugs. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Why is it today that young people, and I'm just talking generally here, young people are more interested in the world than they are in church. I'm going to tell you my opinion, that's all, my opinion. My opinion is that children today are being taught to question everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was a boy, I never questioned anything. Right. What my father and my mother said, that was it. Right. I never kind of said, why? Why? You know, this is all. <laughs> you tell them to do something, why? Why have I got to do that, you know? And because this is part of the culture today, they, they're taught to question everything. And I mean, even when you go to college, it's even worse. You know, you start to question a whole lot of stuff then. But the children are questioning everything. So what happens is that your children are looking at the parents. And these parents go to church. So they go to church Sunday morning, and you know, the children when they're young probably uh, dragged along with them. And I mean dragged along many times. But anyway, they go and uh, as they begin to get a little older and a little smarter in here, they're looking at their parents and say, you know, well, mum and dad, they go, I oh, know, they go to church every Sunday morning and you know, they stand up there and they pray and they, you know, they sing and do all the things they're supposed to do. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I know dad cheats in you know, he lies. And I know that, you know, this and this and that. What I'm trying to tell you is that those children, if they don't see reality in their parents' lives, yeah. they are not going to follow their footsteps. Yeah. And that's what's happening. I can tell you from people that I know personally, from my generation, that when they got to their, the end of their teenage years and got married, church was the last thing they yeah. wanted. And some of them, their parents were uh, elders in the church, in some cases pastors. But they did not impress their children, therefore the kids said, not for me. And that's tragic, isn't it? But I tell you that so that you might be able to help somebody. And I, I sure tell young people, you know, when they get married, uh, you make sure that if you're going to walk in God, that you have a holy life yeah. that will impress your children. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm fortunate in a sense, I suppose, that uh, my parents were, were good enough that I, I knew there was some reality attached to it there somewhere, even though they were just part of the, the church scene. But uh, this is important because, you see, uh, Samuel, the great prophet of Israel, when he uh, was getting old, um, the, the elders of Israel came to him and said, listen, uh, you two boys, they're not exactly koshi, you know, they're not uh, really walking in your ways. In fact, they were cheating and lying to the people and doing all kinds of crazy things. And we don't want them to become the, the spiritual leadership of Israel. So uh, we want you to make us a king. So the whole of Israel was put in jeopardy, really, because of the children of Samuel. 